to clarify how I might start speaking or how I've been narrowing down the way I'm speaking and even just stopping to speak in certain instances. Let me explain how Quixote 381, Quixote, how he thinks. When he was like 18, he joined as much as you could join Temple of the Psychic Youth. 17, 18. Um, now at that time period in, in my life, as Jason, a real boy, I knew this is too smart. I think this is a trap. You had to do 12 months worth of things in order to be considered a full coyote. I only did three or four because I knew it was a trap, but I also was like, um, okay. I think I know what this is, but okay. At least they'll have my DNA if I die. I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, to start off. In the more recent couple of months, each time I've done one of my little stages where I feel like I'm progressing to the next level and I can start communicating more, just sharing more, without really a fear of reciprocity, just like, look, I can do this with a sword, and I don't even know why. But 20 years ago, I was scared to even show people what I could do with a sword. Now it's just like, there is no, there is no recourse. I just kind of have to. Um, each step, I've just kind of looked up a couple of different organizations to see how big they are. At one point, I was like, how big is the Mormon church? Cool. My mom's there. She's been a member for a long time. They all said they'd take care of her. They just didn't know how bad it was. She'll be good, so the so will the family. And most of what I have to say makes sense to them, just not my dad, because he didn't pay attention. And then, more recently, I looked up a very, very, extremely, like, I think, devout group of, like, Orthodox Christian, even Romanov Christian like missionaries that there's like only a thousand of but they're all very deeply committed to like saint jude and missionary work so from the western side of the world i know there's like a thousand people that i would be at least like ah oh, cool he makes what we do make sense just a little bit and then i'm trying not to forget the fact that i'm pretty sure most of the idf and most Russian Orthodox Christianity agrees with me as well. But I'm trying not to like side with that because technically, if I was a normal political voting American, that means that all my friends are on the wrong team. But that's not true because that's dumb. <laughs> that's really dumb because I've driven to Canada and that's another country. Like you're allowed to have friends on the borders. But on top of that, like, none of the friends that I listed are even political friends in any slightest. They don't even have names. It's a thousand people I've never met. I'm just like, I think their faith means that those are a thousand people that don't have salaries but could at least be like, hey, don't kill that guy, please. We're, we're missionaries. So, in the beginning half of this was like, how many people are going to be upset? Now, how many people would say, please don't kill him? What I found out in my life is that if three or four people are willing to just ask one person, please don't kill that person, that makes you pretty valuable in this world. Most people, no one will say, please don't kill that guy. And if we want him, yeah, we can bring him back to the Bible. If we begin to, people begged, don't kill Jesus. That's the way I think it is. You have to get important enough for someone to say please. Otherwise, all they're going to listen to is the borders. And they're going to keep telling you those people are not allowed to be your friend. You're not allowed to tell me that.
You just not know. Because I can change my name for 50 bucks. And 20 years ago, it used to be easier, but you could just write a letter to another government and they'll let you live there. So I'm allowed to have them as friends. No one's allowed to tell me no. And I retired, so you can't even tell me that the ones that were not even members of the enemy's military are still my enemies. You're not allowed to. I have my name back as Jason. I'm not just my social security number anymore. I thought about that the whole time I was just a security number. I also made sure I was enlisted the whole time because enlisted, even when they're medically retired, are retired officers stay in their entire lives. I'm enlisted. I meant you only owned me as long as I let you. And even then, I could have just left. It's only like $53 reward for returning an AWOL soldier. People would send $100 from another country just to let me stay there. I think I'd be okay. That's the way a coyote thinks, though. Is It doesn't really matter if I make it to the end of... You're going to give me a trophy for 20 years? That's cool. Well, 10 years down the line, I might meet a whole bunch of people that are like helping people and decide, I don't want your trophy. And you cannot get mad at me for that. I actually got in a lot of trouble at the end of my military career for telling someone, I'm about to get out. I have 180 days left. I'm going to focus on my family. And she ruined my life. Because she asked me a question and I answered her and I told her I was having a hard time. And she outranked me, so she ruined my life. Just because she felt like it. Mm, she was a chief. She fired me for being nice to her. She asked me how my day was, and I told her, I can't wait to see my son, so she fired me. It's a good thing that she sacrificed having a family to get all those stripes. I'm sure that when she retired, she wasn't lonely at all. Life's about choices. I looked you dead in the eyes when you tried to fix your mistake. Ma'am. And I said coyote about 300 times while I stared you in the eyes and watched your career die. Just like your womb always was. I said oh, my kid was more important than my job and that hurt your feelings. I miss my son, and I don't remember your fucking name. I'm sure you remember mine. See how important kids could have been for you? You and Aaron made a really good team. Between the two of you, you both have two assholes. <laughs>